Hello everybody and welcome to April City Scene. This month we have some interesting topics ranging from a clever way that Public Works is teaming up with Sioux Falls Police and Fire Rescue to train our city's canines. We're also going to learn about how we all can help out with the Greenway cleanup and finally we're going to find out what all the fuss is about, the big squeeze. Stay tuned. Sioux Falls Parks and Recreation has part-time positions available to supervise our open gym programs. Flexible schedules, afternoon, evening, and weekend opportunities are available. Apply online today. Great jobs, great experiences. To find your job, go to SiouxFalls.org slash parks jobs. Welcome back. Up first is Shannon Austin filling us in on the road construction project at 26th Street and Southeastern. Hi again, Sioux Falls. We are here at the intersection of 26th Street and Southeastern Avenue at Rotary Park where there's going to be a lot of activity going on for the next three years. We welcome back to the show Dina from our project management office. Dina, we've got a lot of stuff going on behind us. Can you give our viewers a quick update on what is going on? Sure. Uh, we are starting the Rotary Park um, new location. Um, because of the 26th and Southeastern project, we had to relocate the park. Uh, we're starting to build that here on the west side of the river. So what will be the contractor's main focus for the first month or two? The first focus is we have to build up the, sec the site so much uh, to get it above the water level. Okay. Um, we'll be hauling in a lot of dirt okay. um, so to build a, that up. So will the, our drivers on 26th Street be impacted by that with lane closures or just a lot of trucks? There'll be a lot of trucks coming in and out. Um, if the contractor feels there's an issue, they'll be putting up flaggers, okay. um, but that would be during the non-peak times. Okay, so the contractor's going to try to keep it to, so it wouldn't be Open. a huge impact. Yes, okay. correct. So when our trail users um, are using the trail, they won't be impacted much then this year by that work, or will they? Um, later on in the summer, they will have some impact. Uh, we'll be installing a, a pedestrian bridge that crosses the river that will connect the new uh, Rotary Park to the old Rotary Park. Okay. During that construction, uh, the kayakers and canoers will not be able to go under the bridge. Uh, we'll be installing a temporary portage for them on both sides of the bridge so they can get out, go around the bridge, and then jump back in the river. Because I do see that the the boat launch is actually closed now. So that'll be closed for how long then? That'll be closed for the duration of this season and okay. then into the next couple of seasons with, as we transition into the bridge construction. Okay, so a temporary portage, is that like a dock? Yeah, it's just a, it's a, pla uh, uh, a portable dock um, that we'll, they'll be able to, we'll be able to use and reuse over the next few years and move as we see need. Okay, so for our 26th and Southeastern project, just quickly then, there'll be impacts, not direct impacts, but certainly impacts for the next three years in this area. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. But the, people will still be able to travel through and, and row through and... Right, okay, yep, yep. Good. We'll always have a detour set up for, okay. for the bike path. Okay, so when is the Rotary Park supposed to be open then again to traffic? Uh, it'll be open, it, the construction will go through 2018 here, so okay. late this fall we'll and, be able to be back open. And then the intersection will start probably shortly thereafter. Yes, correct. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time today. You're welcome. So we're not done at the intersection of 26 and Southeastern yet. We're going to go kitty corner over to a property that the city recently purchased and show you what, what our police department is doing over on the other side. We are at the property in the southeast corner of 26th Street and Southeastern. Now when you drive by, you may have noticed that was used to be a dentist's office, but the city has purchased it specifically for the intersection and reconstruction of 26th and Southeastern, where we're going to raise that intersection up 25 feet. So we purchased the, the building, and before we demolish it in this probably the summer of 2018, we always open it up to other departments to actually do training exercises. So we welcome to the show Officer Irish. Welcome. Thank you. Can you tell us what we're going to be seeing today here at the at the building? We are going to be doing some uh, drug odor detection with our canines. Sweet. So how many canines do you have that are, that are part of the force? We have four canines right now. Okay. Um, three of which are what's called dual purpose trained, which they're trained in uh, narcotics work and uh, also in patrol work. And one of which is only a uh, narcotic detection dog. 
So why would a building, an empty building, be important for you guys to, to utilize? We train weekly um, together, and we like to have different locations that are realistic type scenarios okay. or setups for our dogs to train in, uh, as well as our officers to train in. So with this being a commercial building and then there's multiple floors, is that something that the dogs really... It, it works great because it, it's something that uh, is uh, somewhat furnished. It's realistic um, for the dogs to move around. We can hide uh, the drugs in different spots or, or people if we're doing the patrol uh, aspect of it. Um, and it's, it's good for the officers too. So are they trained in any, any other type of officer work? I mean, do they attack dogs or are they guard dogs or...? They, they, uh, they do what's called a bite and hold, uh, okay. which is the pr patrol side of it. Uh, they're trained to apprehend uh, suspects on command. Um, it's um, it's not a, a vicious, aggressive mauling. It's uh, it, just like it sounds, a bite and hold, um, paying compliance for someone who is a, uh, res it's reserved for the most dangerous suspects that we deal with. Okay. So after you folks are done then with the dogs and the odor uh, detection, what, what other things w might you want to use this building for? Um, as far, as far as the dogs, we'll use it for hiding suspects, but there's other uh, sections of our department that we use the building as well, such as the SWAT team, um, learning movements, um, same thing, uh, hiding suspects, um, using different uh, uh, breaching tools, things okay. like that. Bomb squad will come and uh, maybe uh, use their robot, um, um, and, and similar things as the SWAT team. The fire department may also come in um, and use it. So there's really a magnitude of different things yeah. that you guys can do in, in this and, type and we of could a building. And we could even take uh, patrol officers and uh, do some basic uh, refresher type yeah. training and building searches and things like that. So again, if, for those folks that drive by the building every day and they see police officers, at least they nothing's going on. It's no. just it's just training just exercises. Training, training yeah. exercises. Yeah. So do the dogs? Um, are they assigned to a, a specific patrol officer then? They are. Um, we pick handlers that uh, are experienced officers, okay. um, that are uh, motivated individuals. Uh, the dogs uh, live with those individuals that are with uh, their handlers 24-7. Okay. Um, they train um, minimum eight hours a week and uh, go home and have kennels and live with their families. Just so. be normal dogs. Yep. <laughs> and when they're at home, they're, it's like a light switch. They. They, they turn it turn the, the police dog uh, switch off and they're just normal dogs. Um, when they see their handlers in uniforms or they see the cars starting up, they, they turn the switch back they on. They know so, it's business. Yep. Are there specific breeds that are better for this type of work? We typically use um, one of three breeds, mostly because we do the patrol side of it as well. And those breeds are a Belgian Malinois, uh, German Shepherd or a uh, breed such as a Dutch Shepherd okay uh, or a combination of, of those breeds so well this is really a great opportunity for uh, city departments to work together for more than one just purpose of just destroying and building so we really appreciate you guys and your time today and we look forward to seeing what the dogs can do and we appreciate that uh, you guys letting us use these buildings it, it really helps us out a lot so if, if people are driving by can they call your office and ask questions I mean if they if they oh, have absolutely questions? Okay. We're, we're always available um, emails uh, phone calls Great. all right well thanks so much for your time today you're welcome thank you up next did you ever wonder how fire rescue knows all the layouts of the building well here they are filling us in as well as how they keep us all safe. Hi, this is Division Chief Steve Fessler with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And today I'm talking a little bit about engine company surveys. It's an area where a lot of people have questions. They don't quite understand what we're doing. We're out and about at this time of year when it starts to get a little warmer. And uh, I'm gonna talk with Captain Brian Kringstad on Engine 51 to give us a little more information about what we do during an engine company survey. Okay, Brian. So at this time of year, it starts to warm up a little bit. Uh, it's, it's the time when our engines and crews can get out and start doing some different things. And one of the areas that we start at this time is engine company surveys. Give me a little more information on what an engine company survey consists of. An engine company survey is a great way for us as a engine company to get inside a business and look around. Um, we want to get the lay of the land. We want to look for life safety issues. Um, we want to see fire extinguishers. We want to check the 
uh, smoke detectors, the fire, any fire extinguished systems, okay. um, sprinklers, and so on. And also, we just want to look around. We want to look what inside of these buildings look like, because these uh, surveys are in our territory. Mm -hmm. So this is where I work every day. I come to work in this territory, and it's beneficial, extremely beneficial for me to know what the inside of this building looks like. Because as you know, when it's a fire or a real emergency situation, knowledge is power. Yep. So, and I, I know one of the things that you look at doing too is getting after hours contact information. So in the middle of the night, if you need, if something's going, alarm's going off and you need to get into the building, it's, we can contact someone to be able to let us in rather than needing to force your way in. Exactly, yeah, we don't want to do unnecessary damage to these, to these structures. Yep. Um, so if we roll out on scene and the alarms are going off, we don't see anything inside the buildings, maybe we look through the windows, we don't see any smoke, we're gonna hold off and we're gonna try to get a key holder to come on down and let us in yep. instead of forcing the door. Because forcing the door is probably gonna cause damage and we don't wanna do that. And I know one of the big questions that people often have when we're out doing these engine company surveys is, why does it take four firefighters to come and look around my business? Well, that's actually twofold. First, we like to stay together because if we get a call, we can leave together. We're all in the same spot because we stay in service while we're doing this. We're always, we're always on the job. We're always in service working. So if we get a call, we can leave together and it takes less time to get back to the truck. Mm -hmm. um, and the second is we all want to see what these businesses look like. It benefits us all to take a look inside, get the lay of the land, get the, any hazards that might be inside, what it looks like. So, And I know, let's see, I believe it was just under 2,000 commercial buildings that were inspected last year. Mm -hmm. So between our 11 stations and three shifts, we go through a lot of buildings on an average per we year. Do. We do. And let me get this right. We switch it up between the three different shifts too, and why is that? Well, so everybody gets to look at these buildings. Um, if you do the same building every year, yes, it's beneficial, but we want all shifts to be able to look at all the buildings. Now I know another area a lot of people wonder is is the difference between an inspection with the inspectors from mm -hmm. fire prevention and what we're doing on engine company surveys. Can you give me a little dis distinction there? Absolutely. A, an engine company survey, first and foremost, is, is way less formal. We're not looking for violations. I'm not in there looking to write up uh, a business for a violation. I'm looking for life safety. I'm, I'm there for my benefit, to be honest with you. An inspection, when an inspector comes in, they are looking for violations and for code violations. Mm -hmm. They have extensive knowledge of city code, fire code, and that's what they're there for. Thank you, Brian. Well, there's a little more of a look at the day in the life of a firefighter with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. If you'd like to learn more about Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, go to SiouxFalls.org slash fire. Hi, I'm Dr. Thompson with Falls Community Health, here today to talk about the danger of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, tasteless gas that is produced by many items that you may encounter every day, including stoves, furnaces, small gasoline engines, and car exhaust. Carbon monoxide can build up in enclosed spaces which can result in poisoning of people. Carbon monoxide poisoning can result in loss of consciousness or death. The most common symptoms include headache, dizziness, vomiting, and confusion. Carbon monoxide kills more than 500 Americans every year. You can keep yourself safe from the dangers of carbon monoxide by installing carbon monoxide detectors in your home and sleeping areas. If you have questions about carbon monoxide and its possible dangers, please contact your physician or Falls Community Health. Welcome back everybody. We're here at Falls Community Health and did you know that April is the big squeeze? I'm here with Mary Michaels and Mary is the guru who knows everything about blood pressure. Well, I personally have high blood pressure. Um, it's controlled by medication, but it struck me a few years ago. I am someone who works out, I eat healthy, an occasional french fry and mm. hamburger. Mm. Uh, but I was surprised. I mean, it went from normal to through the roof. 
and it was just something that really surprised us. While we, you and I are chatting, would you mind actually if I had my blood pressure checked? No, that's absolutely great. Yep, okay. We've got our friend Melissa here from Falls Community Health and, and she's going to take your blood pressure. So we're Hi, gonna, Melissa. Uh, we're going to have you bear your arm you there bet. because there's things that are really important when you're taking a blood pressure. So when you go to take your blood pressure, you need to be your own best advocate and know what you need to do for the provider to get the best reading. So okay. that includes sitting quietly with your feet flat on the floor. You have a bare arm or as thin of a layer as possible, and you just rest and you follow their directions, and you're gonna sit quietly while Melissa's checking there. And just like you said, blood pressure can come out of the blue. Um, it's called the silent killer because silent there are killer. no symptoms until something more serious like a heart attack or a stroke might happen. Okay. And so it's important to know your family history, to know if you have that in your family history anywhere with high blood pressure, you know, and then to know your lifestyle factors that might impact your blood pressure. I was adopted, so we didn't have a history. And so that's Which, really important to yes. then establish that baseline with your doctor. Right. How'd she do, perfect. Melissa? Perfect. 18 over 70, so you do. Perfect. Do little dance. Yeah, yeah dance. absolutely. Dance. So she mentioned 118 over 70. So people who don't know what those numbers mean, the top number is your systolic, and that's that pressure of the blood when the heart is pumping out. And then the bottom number is the diastolic, so when your heart is at rest. And so blood pressure is measuring that force of the blood in your arteries as your heart is pumping. And so okay. when you have a family history or you have um, some lifestyle factors that may constrict those arteries, and that includes diet, um, exercise, physical activity, being active is great for your blood pressure. Um, and then things like smoking, because that will constrict bad, the bad, arteries, bad, bad. make your heart have to work harder. So those are the things that we're talking about this month, especially because there are some new guidelines that people need to be aware of when Tell it comes me about to that. blood pressure. Well, for years, uh, 140 over 90 was kind of the measure for high blood pressure. Okay. Last fall, the American Heart Association, after many, many years of science and research, mm -hmm. released some new guidelines. So the new high is actually 130 over 80. Ooh. And that's a big change. And so there's wow. still a lot of talk about what does that mean, both for healthcare providers and for patients. Um, does it automatically mean everybody goes on medication? No. Okay. It's an opportunity now for those providers and patients to have really great conversation about what are those lifestyle factors that might be able to help somebody lower, their lower and manage their blood pressure without having to take medication. Now maybe medication becomes part of the equation, and if it is, then it's really important that people really follow their physicians or their healthcare providers instructions Have when it comes to that medication. Yeah. So tell me about all the numbers that are taken this month. What happens to those numbers? So this is actually our eighth year of doing the big squeeze. And we work with community partners from pharmacies, healthcare providers, churches, work sites. You can go just about anywhere during the month of April and have a blood pressure check. Stop in at your local pharmacy. Uh, you might even find your dentist uh, or, or your employer is doing checks. And what we do is we collect the basic information. We ask about gender, age, race, um, you can self-report your height and weight because actually your BMI and your waist circumference can impact blood pressure. Uh, we keep all of that information anonymous. There's nothing attached to your name at all. That's critical. And what okay. we do is just look at how we're doing as a community. Now, before the new guidelines, we were at about a third of our residents at normal and two thirds in the elevated to high. But when we look at our last year's screening numbers, there's actually closer to half of our Sioux Falls residents that would now be classified in a high blood pressure status because of the new guidelines. So we are really focusing on the conversation about lifestyle factors this month. Now, okay, so you were saying we could self-report. Does that mean going to the grocery store and sticking your arm in a cuff, or you go to the gym and you stick it in the cuff yourself, or do you really prefer that someone trained takes the blood pressure? Well, for our purposes with the information we're collecting, you are gonna get your blood pressure checked by somebody who's trained to do it. A, okay. A, even a nursing student, a pharmacy student, your local pharmacist at Lewis or Walgreens, um, you're gonna have somebody do it just like Melissa did with that manual cup. That's really the gold standard. Okay. Now, in between times though, if you are watching, maybe you get an elevated reading or you know you have high blood pressure, it's perfectly fine to use one of those uh, machines that you might find at your fitness center or the grocery store just to give yourself a quick check, but you always want to follow that up with an actual reading at a, you know, by a healthcare provider. To get more information, we have a website, the big squeeze sf for okay. Sioux Falls. 
thebigsqueezesf.org. And you can get all the information there. Um, anyone who's interested can even find materials they can download and start using right away. But okay. we just encourage them to get in touch with us here at Live Well Sioux Falls and be part of the Big Squeeze. Thank you so much. And really, taken for me, this really is a silent killer and you have to have a relationship with your doctor and get this checked out. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up after the break, we're gonna preview this year's Greenway cleanup. The Midco Aquatic Center is hiring part-time lifeguard positions, work while going to school, flexible schedules, and bonus opportunities available. No certification needed to apply. Find out more information at midcoaquaticcenter.org slash employment. My hero is my neighbor because she rakes the lawn for me when I can't. She's always there whenever anyone needs a helping hand. My teacher is my hero because she always makes time for everyone. Welcome back everybody. Here's Matt Gedney filling us in on this year's Greenway Cleanup event. Hi, I'm Matt Gedney. I'm with the City of Sioux Falls Environmental Division of Public Works and we're here today to talk about the 2018 Big Sioux River Greenway Cleanup. This will be our fifth year uh, bringing back the event and we, um, we, it's, a, it's a citywide cleanup along the, the River Greenway, most of which takes place in the bike path. Um, there are nine different parks where citizens can come out and volunteer and help us um, get ready for the summer and, and make sure um, our parks and, and the Greenway are in tip-top shape. Anybody can come out. Um, it's a family-friendly event. Um, really, there's not much that you'll need to bring um, as long as you have some proper attire on because most of the material is, is supplied. Um, so, you, you know, trash bags and, uh, and gloves and various other things that you would need are, are supplied and so um, anybody can participate. This year we have nine different park locations. You can find those at, uh, on, a, on the city's website at uh, siouxfalls.org slash green. The date and time, it's uh, April 21st, 9 a.m. to noon. So sh three short hours. Um, and again, you don't have to volunteer for the entirety of the three hours. You can come for a half hour or whatever you'd like to, to participate and pitch in. Over the last four years, we've um, managed to gather about uh, just under 15,000 pounds of litter. And so there's demonstrated there is a need. And, and that's not to say that Parks Department does a poor job of keeping litter and trash out of the parks, but there are some off the beaten path locations and that, that are sort of unseen. And some, so uh, we're fortunate some of the volunteers, they get their hands dirty and kind of get into some of those um, you know, heavy vegetated areas and that kind of thing. So we have shown that there is a need. And of course, again, most of us that live in the area do um, enjoy the Greenway. And um, we always, of course, just want it to be in the best condition it can be. Again, it's a Saturday, April 21st, 9 a.m. to noon. Anybody can participate, anybody can show up. You can give us the entire three hours, give us half hour, whatever you'd like, um, family friendly. Um, and so anybody can participate. Great way to give back to the community. Up next is Elizabeth Whaley from the Great Plains Zoo, filling us in on how we can all help with the Chamber Community Appeal to build a new lion exhibit at the zoo. There is so much going on this spring at the zoo. We've got the Dino Roars exhibit that's going on now through April 15th. So if you haven't seen the more than 20 animatronic dinosaurs that have crept into our great room in our museum, uh, you have to come on out. They are really spectacular. We also are just getting ready to kick off our capital campaign for the Chamber Appeals. We were very honored to get the Chamber Appeal slot for 2018 and so April 2nd through the end of July, we'll be working with the business community to raise a vetted amount of $1.41 million from the business community to help with our lion exhibit. The overall campaign will continue on. We're funding our lion exhibit and that campaign is price tagged at $5 million. A lion exhibit here at the Great Plains Zoo will be right at the heart of our mission. It will help us with our conservation work, breeding uh, these terrific animals that are so deeply endangered in the wild. Lions, we're told, along with other big cats, could all be extinct in the wild by the year 2040. So it's really important that zoos are combining together to work to breed these animals and work in the wild in field work, saving them from extinction. 
Modern zoological institutions exist to save animals from extinction. Along the way, we're teaching kids, we're delighting families, we're giving you this great day of recreation in a beautiful park. But at the heart of what we do is saving animals. So our team of biologists across the country and integrated around the world are working to figure out solutions to save these big cats from extinction. The lion exhibit will be a terrific advancement for the zoo and our guests will just delight in seeing a whole pride of lions. So we'll have a number of adults, cubs every few years because this will be a breeding facility for lions. But so many fun activities from seeing a lion demonstration, see how our zookeepers work with our lions under human care and get them to do what the zookeeper would like them to do, but also participate in their own medical care. People can see those demonstrations, people can watch the pride rolling and stalking uh, from the comfort of their own cafe. They can have a little lunch, look into the lion exhibit. So there'll be so many advancements for us. And expanding our cafe seating is important because we've grown our attendance so much that we wanna make sure we have continued amenities for people to enjoy not just the animals, but a day long visit with their family. If anyone would like to help us with the lion campaign or learn more about the lion exhibit, feel free to give us a call here at the zoo or go to greatzoo.org. Did you know that the city has a new management team overlooking the golf courses? Well, let's learn all about it. My name's Justin Arlt and I'm the new market general manager for the uh, landscapes uh, company. And uh, we'll be here on property full time now uh, with the Sioux Falls uh, city golf courses. What we will bring, first and foremost, is going to be a food and beverage change. I think we're going to try to have a little bit more uh, service-oriented options. So rather than self-service with hot dogs and food and, and beer, uh, we're going to want to get out behind the counter and, and kind of give the service to the patrons. Uh, and the big, big part of that is going to be the food side. We're actually going to have uh, a full menu that will involve breakfast food like parfaits, uh, bagel sandwiches in the mornings. We'll have uh, an offering of three or four different salads. We'll have flatbread pizza, quesadillas, uh, a whole gamut of, of food options for golfers to have while on property before they play, at the turn, after they play, uh, and kind of hang out and uh, be able to enjoy uh, each other's company here on property at all, all three facilities. As far as the golf course, there won't be major changes. Um, we've updated uh, the look of all three scorecards um, for, for the courses. Uh, on the course, we've got great golf courses that have been very well maintained for a number of years, so that will continue. However, Landscapes Unlimited has an array of talented uh, agronomists and people at our disposal. So we fully intend to improve on the course conditions uh, that have been uh, a mainstay and very positive. Uh, it'll be slow but sure, but we, we think by the end of the, end of the season uh, and as uh, years go on that the golfers will really come to appreciate the playing surface um, and the course conditions uh, in general with the expertise with the agronomy team that we have with landscapes. One of the other focuses for us will be the service. There's always been good service uh, at the facilities, um, but what we're gonna try to change a little bit is the culture and try to make sure that we step that up a notch and what we provide is personalized service. So our philosophy and our culture that we're gonna try to establish with all three facilities is gonna be that home away from home feeling. Um, you know, golf is recreation and it's fun. So we wanna present that kind of vibe and that kind of feel and that welcoming family atmosphere. In three short weeks, I've been asked a lot about staff and I wanna make sure everybody knows that a lot of the great staff that uh, people have, have sparked relationships with and are very happy with are back. We've retained uh, all the head golf professionals at all three facilities as well as their main assistants. So those familiar faces uh, that you've taken lessons from and you've come to know will be, will be uh, retained and be on property which is exciting uh, because those relationships in a lot of cases have been uh, built to over uh, 10 years or more. 
So we covered a lot of information today. I threw a lot out there. Uh, one thing I want to note is that the website has changed. It's going to be SiouxFallsGolf.com. Uh, that is going to be the engine and that's where you'll be able to find out all the programs and actually also book online tea times. As always, thank you so much for joining me. If you're looking for some more information, visit our YouTube channel or www.SiouxFalls.org. Thanks.